when we go through our Freedom Watch section, what money has the government taken from you, what junkets have members of Congress taken, what bills did they enact, what money did they waste, what freedom did they deny you, we will read your emails. I was giving a speech in Kansas, and I've told this to Congressman Paul, and in the audience were some members of Congress, I won't mention their names, and I was telling them the things that the government can now do to violate the Fourth Amendment under the Patriot Act. And two of them came to me and were terrified and said, we didn't know this was in the Patriot Act until you told us. And then I asked them a question that I already knew the answer to. Well, did you read the Patriot Act before you voted on it? And they said, no. And I said, what did you read? And they said, an executive summary prepared by the Justice Department, to which I said, what do you expect yeah. would be in there? Yeah, well, they just put a name on that, like the Patriot Act. Well, who's going nice to be unpatriotic? Nobody right. wants to, whenever there's a government bill, it's usually the, 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 the title is the opposite. And stability. Yeah, it's the opposite of what the title implies. What it's should we call the Stimulus Act? Is it depressant. It's the an depressing economic time. depressant. But, you know, and it's not just the, the pork that Tracy points out. It's the entire bill. The whole thing is misguided. We shouldn't have any it's of it. It's not a stimulus it's, package. It's a stimulus well, package because no, no, it doesn't stimulate the right, economy. Well, it simulates an the economy. The way you right. stimulate the economy is to shrink the government. The government interferes with the economy. The government acts as a suppressant to economic yeah, activity. Yeah, it yeah, undermines yeah, the yeah. free market. We need a smaller government, not may a bigger I, government. May I say that aside from... Ron Paul, Issa, um, DeMint, I mean, I, those are the few that come to mind that actually I think can articulate and understand what's going on. When these people were voted in, they were voted in probably for very silly reasons. They were not voted in to handle the biggest financial crisis ever. Uh -huh. So we have a lot of incompetency down there, and we're handing them Wall Street, we're handing them CEO pay, we're handing very, very unemployment we, we rates are, that we haven't seen, we are handing, and they don't know what to do with we, it. We are not handing this to them. They are grabbing yeah. it, Clearly. notwithstanding Clearly. the fact that the Constitution, by its plain language and ordinary simple understanding, restrains it. Congressman Paul, was the free market argument ever made? Did anybody in the Congress ever say, very simply, hey, guys and gals, how are you going to pay for this? Even John McCain, not necessarily a friend of the free market, called this generational theft, not shift, theft. You're stealing from our children to waste their money today. Were these arguments ever made? I, uh, yeah, I have to concede there were some arguments made on the House floor by Republican members. Uh, but it's a little too little, uh, too late. They would get up and say some of the very things that we're saying. But they knew they didn't have their votes. They weren't responsible for getting the bill passed. They didn't have to kowtow to George Bush. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, they all stuck together and they voted against it. And they said some very good things. But, you know, in the early part of last year, we had the first $100 billion. That was back when $100 billion didn't mean much, you know. Uh, <laughs> but they passed $100 billion. But that was the first stimulus package, and that was George Bush's. And they all, not all of them, but almost all the Republicans voted for it. That's the problem is... I think many times they know better, but their politics get involved and uh, partisanship and, and uh, so many other things. Do you know of any uh, governors or mayors like perhaps uh, Bobby Jindal of Louisiana who's already said, I don't want your money because I don't want the strings that come with it? Yeah, how about Mark Sanford from South Carolina? Yeah. Same thing. Mark, Mark Sanford is, is very good. Matter of fact, uh, he might have even attended some of your meetings uh, Judge, when you came to Washington, because he was part of my Liberty Caucus. Right, oh, right. He's a very good oh, one of the worst aspects of the uh, depressant bill is the discretionary spending that uh, Barack Obama and Tim Geithner now have. Well, what is your worst fears as to what they'll do with that? I mean, they can literally spend it the way Hank Paulson spent the tarp, with no uh, accountability, without even reporting to anybody how Yeah, well, spending. the biggest problem isn't even where they're spending it. It's just that they're spending it. I mean, that's the problem. They have to borrow this money or print the money in order to spend it when the last thing we need now is spending. We got ourselves into this mess because we spent too much money. The solution isn't to find a way to spend more. The solution is to stop spending. That's what the market is trying to do. That's what the credit crunch is all about. The market is trying to rein in the spending. It's trying to rein in the consumer credit. That's the good thing.
The government doesn't like that. The government wants to get back to the bubble. The government thinks that it can recreate the conditions that led to the problem. But they're going to create a bigger problem, which Congress and Ron Paul is talking about, which is going to be the collapse of our money, the value of the dollar. And then when the government can't borrow anymore, what good is all their stimulus checks when they all bounce, when you can't buy anything with them because there's no value left in our money? Tracy. I still come back to the capability issue. I mean, look at Tim Geithner now. Not only does he have to solve the banking crisis, they're throwing the autos at him as well. Like He's on the auto czar team or whatever. There are not enough smart people down there. You know, if we were voting today, would we vote the same people in? And I think not. I think not. I think you'd want to know that they had an MBA on their uh, but, resume. Uh, they had Wall Street but experience. Nothing, this, this, is this is not their job. They should be. not be making agreed, these decisions. Agreed, but we're in it. We're in it. The spigot has been turned on. Do you know how difficult it is to turn this but spigot But remember, off the now? reason that the free market works is because individual entrepreneurs make decisions to make a profit. Not I the government. Put them I in the government. The it doesn't work capitalist anymore. capitalist going, but we started this mess, and these are not the people. But the government can never fix the mess. And, and on that very note, but on Tracy's note about the fact that we should basically that vote out everybody who's in office, I do think there is a slow but, but actually accelerating and potentially huge uprising against the two-party fraternity slash political system in this country. I see it on the uh, on the blogs. I see it on my show. I'm hearing more and more people in disgust say they will never vote for a Republican or it Democrat. Is, what we need is for the courts again. to put an end it to is, it and reign in the government. one of the reasons that this gathering exists with so many people logging on to us every Wednesday morning or afternoon, depending upon where uh, you happen to be. Uh, one of the things that I found most offensive about this, Congressman Paul, and, and I, I suggest that this must have come from the conference committee because I didn't hear it debated, I didn't hear the president talk about it, I didn't hear Mrs. Pelosi talk about it, I didn't hear Harry Reid talk about it, I didn't hear you or Jim DeMint rail against it, so they must have snuck it in under cover of darkness, is the caps on executive compensation for companies that have already received federal money. This is not like... Here's a billion dollars. Take it under these conditions. This is, we loaned you a billion dollars, or we bought a billion dollars of your stock six months ago. We now want to impose this retroactive condition on you for having taken the billion six months ago. Where did that come from? I don't know exactly. There, there was a little bit of discussion before the final version that you're right. I, I don't believe it was in, either in the Senate bill or the, housing, or the House bill. But it was stuck in in the conference, and uh, that, that's how, just like we talked before, that's how this things get in there. And that is, of course, going to play havoc with the whole, uh, whole you know, program. Did the government uh, do a good job with Amtrak? I mean, how, you know, did they do a good job with the post? Did they, yes. they run anything effectively? How are they going to run the office? They just shot themselves in the foot with, with the, the post CEO office? Pay. No, with the CEO pay. This must drive you crazy because these are the most incompetent people in the country trying to run a business, and they're saying... You can run the business better by not going out and getting the best talent. It drives me insane because there are no accountants on the there are no accountants down there. There are no number crunchers. As a former number cruncher accountant dork, it drives me nuts. You know what? They shot themselves in the foot. Former dork. Former. Continual dork. Sorry. Um, okay, first, judge, now we're gonna take pay in restricted stock. Well, you know what that means? My payroll expense now as a major corporation. Just went downhill. Yippee! My expenses just went down because I'm going to pay everybody in restricted stock. And you know what? I don't have to report restricted stock till it's exercisable. Oh. So now, bam, company's payroll expense has just gone down. That means the other side of the balance sheet, all the good stuff, just went up. So they indirectly hurt them. And all, the, uh, all they have to do, Lloyd Blankfein, is say, don't call me a senior exec anymore. I want to be a junior guy. And he's millions and millions of dollars. Right, well, they're going to promote the people guys. from the mailroom. They're the what, top guys. What will, happen, <laughs> what will happen as a practical matter, Peter Schiff, what will happen to banks and other entities that call themselves banks, the seed TARP funds, or any entity that has received federal money, as to which the feds will now say retroactively, Madam Chief Executive, Mr. Chief Executive, your pay has been lowered to this. Where will that person go? Well, a lot of them might quit. But, I mean, the one thing you need to know for sure, any company that's getting government money 
don't be a shareholder because they're never going to make a profit. Yeah. They're now basically yeah. like government entities. They're like government Welfare departments. institutions. They're going to be run in, in perpetual losses to benefit the employees of the companies. But the owners of the companies, or people who think they own the company, are never going to get anything. Yeah, but you can also, but you can let, also let, argue that they're going to want to pay this crap back faster. They're never, they're they're not ever, they're never going to. No, they're now they're, 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 they're now. They are. I want you to make the argument.